You use your tongue a lot when you sing, and depending on how you position it, it can either hinder you or help you to get the sound that you want. Today I'm going to teach you good tongue position for singing, and I'm going to give you some tips to avoid that dreaded tongue tension. Let's get to it. Hello singers, my name is Ronya Peterson and I'm here to geek out on your voice. Now getting my tongue position right was one of those things in my vocal journey that was like BAM! Uh, I was having a hard time getting the right resonant space and I was having sort of a muffled sound and getting my tongue position right really helped me there. So I want to get you there too. Today we're going to look at tongue position, how does your tongue move and where should it sit and then as I said in the intro we're going to look at tongue tension. Now if you already know how your tongue behaves that's totally cool if you just want to get to the tongue tension part, it's hard to say tongue tension part, uh, it starts right at this time. The rest of us, we're going to take a look at your tongue. Your tongue moves around a lot when you speak and when you sing and it has to otherwise we can't understand what you're saying. Uh, just try with me right now to say the phrase I am a singing geek and try to say it without moving your tongue. If you have clean uh, hands, you can even put a, a finger on your tongue to help it not move. So let's try that together right now. I am a... <laughs> nice. So I could even feel that my tongue it wanted to push against the fingers because it wanted to move around uh, to make the vowels and the consonants that it needed to, to make the, our language. So the tongue moves around a lot, uh, really. It moves the tip up and down, uh, the sides can move and curl, the middle of the tongue can move up and touch the different molars, and the back of the tongue can move up to touch the soft palate or lay flat. So when we talk about tongue position, it's not that there's just this one position that your tongue should be in at all times, otherwise we would not be able to communicate what? with each other, right? But there is this general sort of neutral or centered position that's really good for your tongue. The neutral tongue position is one where the tip of the tongue lies gently behind your bottom front teeth and it is nice and flat in the back, yeah? So with the tip, we don't want it to push against your bottom front teeth. We want it to curl up or down, just nice and relaxed. And you should also be able to feel the underside of the tongue on the gum ridge, yeah? And in the back, this flat position that I was talking about is the one that I was missing when I was first starting out. Um, and it's really good to have this flat position because it creates space in the pharynx. It creates a space that really helps you resonate here and get that fuller tone. So get that space, yeah? Now with this neutral position, the, the tongue that's in between these two positions, uh, it's then free to go up and create the different vowels. For example, if I'm creating an E vowel, my tongue will go up and touch the first molar. E yeah, very nice. So uh, that is a really nice position that you have the neutral and then you can move around very relaxed and very easy, very good. I should say that on your consonants, the tongue obviously is not touching the tip of your bottom front teeth. It can't, right? If you're saying L, L, the tongue goes up. So it's up to you as a singer to go L and go back down. So for example, if you're singing the word love, love, love you want to get that tongue down into the nice neutral position the reason we care so much about the vowels when we sing is because we pull on the vowels and we don't say the consonants for that long so for example if i'm going i'm not going love right i'm going love love my vowel is the one that's long one last thing to mention about the good tongue position is that you might see some singers have this dent in the tongue this divot when they sing and that's something that naturally happens over time with most singers as they create that nice resonant space and they calibrate their instrument you might even see that you're doing it without thinking about it already so don't try and do it on purpose don't go like that but if you notice it happening it's definitely something that should also be categorized as good tongue position <laughs> In theory, a neutral tongue position seems pretty straightforward, right? So why are so many people worried about it? Well, there is this one thing that th sort of throws a wrench into the whole works and that is the fact that your tongue is connected to your larynx. 
And if you saw my video on larynx control, you know that inside the larynx, we have the vocal folds. And so any tension in this area travels to your vocal folds and it can put strain on your voice. So that's the whole thing about this that we want to avoid. And that's why so many people are also talking about, oh, we want the tongue to move independently uh, of the other groups here. We want the tongue to move on its own because we don't want it to affect anything else. That's why we want to get this neutral tongue position. There's two things to look out for with tongue tension. And that is a tongue that is pulled too far back, tongue, a tongue that is retracted, so it puts pressure on your larynx. And then there's a tongue that is pulled too far out, so that lifts your larynx, yeah? The tongue retraction is probably the most common one. So a few things that you can look for if you think that you might have tongue retraction. So the first one is to just look. If your tongue keeps going back when you sing, yeah, then you can see that the tongue is retracting. Yeah. The second thing is a very common thing is that you can take your thumb and you can feel underneath your chin where it's supposed to be soft, that if it stiffens up or if it sort of bulges out, um, then there's also some tension there, right? Another common way to identify tongue retraction is the sound like Kermit the Frog, yeah? Uh, you can actually try and imitate that sound right now and then put your thumb here and see if you can feel it. It's good sometimes to feel it so that you know what to look for. So put your thumb here. Yeah, and then use that Kermit the Frog voice, retract your tongue, pull it all the way back. Yeah, ooh, I can really feel it right here. Let me know in the comments below if you were able to feel this tension. Okay, so now you know how the tongue retraction uh, feels like. So if that's something that's happening to you, I have two exercises that we can do to help you get through that. The first exercise to help you get rid of tongue retraction is one that's super commonly known. And it's the one where you put a pencil here, mm -hmm, under your tongue, so make sure you wash the pencil. Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. And then you can train on an ah, you can actually go into any vocal exercise that you're working on and with an ah sound sing here. Yeah? Ah. So you can just sing glides. Very cool one. Now, if it's hard to do this and if it keeps pulling back, then I have a second exercise that I find works for a lot of my students. And it's where you take your thumb and your index finger and you put it right here. You pull the tongue out like this. Yeah, and then you can sing through one of your favorite songs and as the tongue gets drier, it's easier to hold it out. You can also put a tissue between your fingers. Uh, you should really have clean fingers <laughs> for a lot of my training videos because we use them a lot. But um, yeah, let's try it out. So you're gonna go. Wake me up when it's all over. When I'm lighter and I'm over. Yeah, you're holding that tongue out helping it. When you want to pull it back, you're helping it. Now the next step is to just keep the tip and again when the tongue gets dry, you can hold on to it much easier. You can put it where you want it down here. Yeah? And then the next step is to just keep the tip of the finger here. Just monitor and then you just take your hand away, go wash your hands and then the training wheels are off and you're singing without tongue retraction. Okay, so let's talk about the other outer position for tongue tension, the one where your tongue is pulled out too much, right? So the way that you can recognize this is usually that you kind of have a tongue that wants to sit on top of your teeth, yeah? And you can feel that your larynx is sort of up here and sort of like a, sometimes a lump in the throat feeling. That's how it looks and feels. The sound quality tends to be like a little more nasal sometimes because as the tongue is pulled up, it sort of closes off a lot of the resonant space that you want there in the back and it gets let into the nasal cavity, yeah? So that's the sound quality and how it feels. So if this is something that you think happens to you, it's something that did happen to me when I was starting out and I learned to train it to go away. So if it's something that you feel happens to you, then there's some exercises that you can do. Now it's a little bit different because we can't quite push the tongue back like we could hold it out in the other one. But there's some exercises that we can do. The first one is that a lot of people describe that it's like their tongue is in the way and it feels too big for their mouth. So we gotta get us to relax. We gotta relax. So it's a very common exercise where you tilt your head 
down like this and you just relax. Uh, or relax. Nice. And you go back up. Oh. And now your tongue feels a lot smaller. And it's not here anymore. Right? It's here. Where it should be. Yeah? And that creates more space. The tongue gets out of your way. The second exercise to help you is to sing with a yawn. I've said this before. All voice teachers say this all the time. But it is so good for you. Because once you yawn... You create that space in the pharynx. And that's the problem that we were having with this tongue going out. Is that we were lifting it in and there was not enough space in the pharynx. So sing with a yawn or just like, let's just try and yawn first. Oh, put the tongue behind the lower teeth here. Oh, oh, oh my God. I'm feeling all that space. Hello! Ooh. If you're someone who's used to this sort of sound and you're getting ah, oh, ah, oh, this sort of more open sound, it might even sound curvy to you. And so be careful with that, that you're not sort of getting so used to this sound that you're not, that you're thinking, oh, now I'm having tongue uh, retraction. So feel out the different two. And also remember, you might be doing it right all along. Sometimes when we go on our vocal journey, we want so badly to geek out on everything and studying everything. And I think you should know about everything, enjoy it. But also, sometimes you're doing things right on your own. Sometimes you're already doing it right and you didn't have to change anything. So unless you're feeling crazy tense and tension from any of these things, maybe it's just okay the way you're doing it. Go do some vocal exercises and sing some of your songs instead. Okay, singing geeks, it's getting dark here in Denmark and I'm losing some light, so I'm going to wrap this up. But just know that the most important thing in all of this is that you feel nice and relaxed and that you're happy with the tone that you're producing. And also remember to support with your air and keep that jaw nice and relaxed. It's going to help the tongue move in the way that you want, okay? So you need the foundation that you can practice the tongue uh, position on top of. This whole thing with tongue movements has a lot to do with our vowels, as I explained in the beginning of the video. And I'm creating this mini-series on how to pronounce nice, resonant, beautiful vowels. And that series will be linked right here. In the meantime, if you haven't already done it, I invite you to subscribe right here. Join us at SingGeek every week as we continue to geek out on your voice to create the sound that you want. Those look all kinds of scary. Oh.